Good evening. We are live streaming from St. James Episcopal Church in Skinny Atlas, and we will be praying the service of evening prayer. For those of you online, there is a bulletin at, on St. James' website at stjamesscan.org, and for those of you present here in the nave, there is a complete bulletin, but I will also be giving the page numbers for the Book of Common Prayer. I want to say a particular thank you to the team this evening, Danae Heidi, who is running our technology, and Sister Marie Patricia Hughes, who will be leading the prayers and reading the readings. We begin with opening sentences for the service of evening prayer that come from Scripture. And ha having just uh, come out of daylight savings time, it is very dark, and many of these readings uh, re refer to darkness and light, and so they seem particularly um, significant. I will begin, however, with a verse from Psalm 141. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. And if you think about the way incense, the smoke of the incense rises, and we, I think we've always imagined that the, the smell of that smoke and the, the receiving of our prayers is pleasing to God. And so our, the lifting up of our prayers tonight um, will come right before the throne of God. And when, it, when we refer to lifting up our hands as the evening sacrifice, a sacrifice really is simply an offering of worship. And so what we're doing here this evening is offering ourselves and our prayers in worship, not only for the group that's gathered here, but really on behalf of the world. And then a passage, a verse from Amos. Seek him who made the Pleiades and Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night, who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out upon the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. Turning to page 116 in the Book of Common Prayer. I'm going to read an invitation to the confession that you won't find there, but I will invite you to say the confession with me. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. And please join me aloud. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, that, that we may delight in your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. I'm turning to page 117 in the Book of Common Prayer. Please join me in the responses of the invitatory. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. 
And turning to page 118, let us say together the, the words of the Fos Hilaron, which begins, O gracious light. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our psalm tonight is Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16. And it will be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 720, 720. I will start by reading the odd verses and ask all of you to join me with the even verses. Because you have made the Lord your refuge in the most high your habitation, there shall no evil happen to you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Yes, he is bound to me in love. Therefore will I deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lesson tonight is from the book of Titus, and it's the New Living Translation. Remind them to submit to rulers and authorities. They should be obedient and ready to do every good thing. They shouldn't speak disrespectfully about anyone, but they should be peaceful, kind, and show complete courtesy toward everyone. We were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, and slaves to our desires and various pleasures, too. We were spending our lives in evil behavior and jealousy. We were disgusting, and we hated other people. But when God, our Savior's kindness and love appeared, he saved us because of his mercy, not because of the righteous things we had done. He did it through the washing of new birth and the renewing by the Holy Spirit, which God poured out upon us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so, since we have been made righteous by his grace, we can inherit the hope for eternal life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in saying the words of the Magnificat found on page 119 in the Book of Common Prayer. This is the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor upon his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. 
He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our second lesson tonight is from the book of Luke, chapter 17, and it's a translation from the Common English Bible. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten men with skin diseases approached him, keeping their distance from him. They, are, they raised their voices and said, Jesus, Master, show us mercy. When Jesus saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priests. As they left, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw that he had been healed, returned and praised God with a loud voice. He fell on his face at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus replied, Weren't ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? No one returned to praise God except this foreigner? Then Jesus said to him, Get up and go. Your faith has healed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in saying the words of the Nunc Dimittis, which is found on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer. This, this is the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. It's been a while since I have um, mentioned the fact that there are two calendars of readings for the church year. One is the office lectionary, which goes through scripture in course, which means chapter by chapter and psalm by psalm. And then there is the Eucharistic lectionary, which typically is has some sort of a theme that you can determine by listening carefully to the scriptures together. And because it's easier to talk about the Eucharistic lectionary, that's the one that we use for uh, evening prayer. So kind of for those of you who pay attention to these things, it's a little bit of a mix up there. Uh, how that being said, however, the readings uh, t tonight did not easily lend themselves to a topic, and what I what I want to I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest something at the very end. But what I want to um, do first is just to say a little something about each of these readings. The Psalm 91 kind of sets us up to have unrealistic expectations. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, no evil shall happen to you. No plague shall come near your dwelling. What does that mean, then, since all of us have, have experienced a plague <laughs> in the last three years and no doubt could easily identify evil that has happened to us? Does that mean that we haven't made God our refuge? I got to thinking about the fact, well, maybe this is about Jesus. But then when you think about what happened in Jesus' own life, he certainly experienced evil. And so where, where does that really leave us in thinking about a text like this? And I think where it leaves us is that we are, um, we have to put ourselves into the hands of God 
and not pay too much attention to trying to define this or that or put things in categories or label things or even evaluate too much the things that go on in our own lives, but simply to over and over and over again put ourselves into the hands of God, trusting that God is caring for us regardless of what we may see that's going on in the world. That's a pretty tall order, though, I do have to say. Um, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. The, uh, the, the reading from Titus, I, I think, goes in a direction that is a little bit surprising. He, he starts off by saying, We were once foolish, disobedient, deceived, and slaves to our own desires and various pleasures. We did all this stuff. We were disgusting. We hated other people. But then we were saved. And you would think that the next thing was, and now I don't do any of those things, right? But that's not what he says. What he talks about is the fact that despite all of that, we have been made righteous by God's grace. Regardless of the things we do or don't do, we are made worthy in God's eyes by, by the love of God, by God's own love um, for us. And so there, there really isn't anything um, that we have done that we can say we deserve except that we have been given this incredible grace, which does lead us, I think, um, very easily and naturally to this next story. Um, ten, ten people were cleansed. Ten were delivered from a life of um, isolation and being living on the margins and n none of them were delivered from that because of who they were or what they had done or having deserved anything they were delivered because of God's grace which is the truth for all of us we are delivered we are saved we are um, we are loved because of who God is, not because of who we are. And the end of that story is, uh, is one person who responds with gratitude. And that, that really is the, the posture for all of life. Not, not worrying about, you know, have I done this, have I done that, but to say, to, to look at all of life with gratitude, knowing that we are, in fact, in God's hands. I am reminded of the, the, um, the truism that what you focus on grows, and if we focus on the things for which we are grateful, the things for which we are grateful will grow. And we, we will experience more gratitude in our lives when, when that is our posture. So I am just going to suggest again that he here we are in prayer, offering up our worship to God. And if you can even think for a moment about something for which you are grateful, I would encourage you to just go ahead and offer that to God in prayer. And, and we are then lifting up our hands as the evening sacrifice of worship. If you would join me now in saying the words of the Apostles' Creed, which you'll find on page 120 in the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Our prayers tonight can be found in the Book of Common Prayer, starting on page 121. Please pray with me. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Intercessory prayers B are found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 122. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. That your holy angels may lead us in paths of peace and goodwill. That we may be pardoned and forgiven for our sins and offenses. That there may be peace to your church and to the whole world. That we may depart this life in your faith and fear and not be condemned before the great judgment seat of Christ. That we may be bound together by your Holy Spirit in the communion of all your saints, entrusting one another in all our life to Christ. This time we invite those on Facebook to post your prayer request and those in the nave to please uh, say what you would like us to pray for. Lifting our hands in thanksgiving as our evening sacrifice, patient and suffering and grateful for blessings. Pray for my sister Jean and her husband Ralph. For Fred Scholl and his wife. Please pray for those in the path of Hurricane Nicole. Okay, Sherry, we sure will. I ask prayers for Euclid, whose wife was just denied a visa to come visit him later this month. That's uh, Euclid is a friend of Michael Brown's. And also for those in war and weather-related trouble. A prayer of the day. Almighty God, you have knit together the, your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and goodly, godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. I'd like to say a prayer of thanksgiving for the absolutely beautiful weather that we have had and that God will continue to bless all of us. A prayer for the presence of Christ. Lord Jesus, stay with us. For evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope. That we may know you as you are revealed in scripture in the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. A prayer for our nation. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land, that barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease, 
that our divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. You, O oh God, have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth to confront one another without hatred or bitterness and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. And finally, a prayer for mission. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give your rest to the weary. Bless those who are dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. It is a uh, delight to be at prayer with all of you, those online and those gathered in the nave. I'm thankful for your presence tonight. We will be celebrating the life of Fred Scholl this coming Saturday at 2 p.m. with a funeral service here in the nave, followed by a reception in the parish hall, and all are invited. Also this coming Sunday at 4 o'clock here in the nave, we will have um, the uh, Christmas offering by the Masterworks Chorale, which is a sing-along of the, of the Christmas portion of the Messiah. And there, for those of you who might like to join in the singing, there is a rehearsal on Friday evening at 7, and there will be scores available for anyone who doesn't have one. <coughs> I, do, I ha have thought of this e every week for a while. Um, when, when we get to the close of the service, those of us here in the nave, sit quietly while the live stream ends. There's about a six second lag. And so we just sit here and uh, then we'll take the opportunity after that to greet one another. But I just wanted to tell you why we just sit here <laughs> at the close of the service. If you would now join me in praying the general thanksgiving, which you can find on page 125 in the Book of Common Prayer. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Good night, everyone.